Hi everyone, so I wanted to show you guys how to install Docker and also use Docker containers with CLine. So why do we need Docker? For example, I have a sample program right now, and then this program is using isUpper as an example. isUpper returns a Boolean value, but we can store this Boolean value inside that integer as well. In my computer, when I'm using isUpper, true is one and false is zero. I'm also using an uninitialized value to um, demonstrate what could happen when we're doing some behavior that's not defined. So let's run this program. Is upper for uppercase F should be true, which I'm getting as one. Lowercase F is false, so leaving a zero. And I'm getting this value for initialized integer. The first two values are the same, but the initialized integer is going to be something random every time you run this program. So if you were to run this program in a different architecture machine, we might get different behavior. And this is where Docker comes in. It lets us test different architectures on one machine. One more thing that Docker helps us do is on my machine, I can't run Volgrind because Volgrind, Volgrind program does not exist for my architecture. If I use a Docker container with Volgrind program binary in it, we can also use Volgrind to test for memory leaks or other memory issues. So to demonstrate why is this an issue, I'm also going to show you how does this program run on a different computer. So I have a virtual machine running on an AMD 64 bit computer. And then I have the main.cpp file set up as the um, same program here. Uh, let's quit this one and then let's compile it and run it. Okay. And then as you guys can see, now we have a different output. Previously, true was one and false was zero. And right now I have 256 and zero for uh, false. Okay, so how can we download Docker? The first thing to do is to download the Docker um, desktop client. You can do that from the Docker's website. And then that's what I did here. When you download it, it should be running. You, can, you should see a green Docker symbol on the left side. Once you see that, we can go to the next step, which is to pull the Docker images that we're gonna use. I'm gonna demonstrate this on two images. Uh, one of them is for a the one of them is an ARM architecture uh, based Docker image, and the other one is an x84. And then how to pull these images are, we're going to copy this command right here. And then we're going to open the terminal, and then we're going to paste that command. And then this is going to download that image. Okay, now the first image is, uh, image is downloaded, let's download the other one. You don't necessarily have to do both. I'm doing both to demonstrate how to uh, run this program on a Linux machine based on x64 and also a Linux machine on ARM architecture CPU. Now that both of the images are downloaded, let's go back to CLine and then let's configure CLine so that we can run the program on these containers. Okay. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to settings. We're going to go to preferences. We're going to go to build execution deployment and then tool chains. And then you just need to do add Docker. And then let's create two. So this one I'm going to name Docker arm. And then we just need to make sure we have the correct image and everything checks out. We have green check marks. Everything is detected. Let's create one more. And uh, let's select the correct image. I'm just going to wait for everything to be detected. This one is going to be slower because because of my architecture being ARM, this is going to be running on Rosetta. Okay, this is also done. Let's also go to CMake and then configure two additional profiles so we can run them through the configuration menu up on the right hand side. And then I'm going to name one of them Docker ARM. And let's make this a debug build. And then let's use the tool chain that we just created. The rest should, should be fine. And then let's make this one Docker x64. And then let's make this one be Docker x64. And then let's also make this debug. Okay. Everything looks good. Let's click OK. If everything checks out, we should be able to see those um, new profiles that we created up here. And then they should all say finished. So let's make sure, let's wait until the 
uh, CMake projects is finished. So this one is finished. And this one is also finished. Once they're finished, we should be able to see them up in this menu. Okay. Now we're able to run these Docker, the program on these Docker containers. Let's run it on our machine first. And as you guys can see, we have different results. Because this is running on Linux, we are seeing the um, different results because the, the machine that I demonstrated that had the 256 value was also a Linux machine. And let's also test on Linux x64. And you guys can see we are seeing the uh, different values here as well. And you got you can use all of the same functionality C line offers on these Docker containers. You can also debug as well. Okay. And then let's also set the Volgrind up so we can actually use memory debugging as well. So let's go to Docker base ARM container. Let's try to use Volgrind. It's not going to work. Why? Because we haven't defined the Volgrind executable. How do you find this Volgrind executable? Let's go to services. And then let's find the, it should pop up like that. When you see the Docker, you're going to click run. And then we're going to look at the images. Uh, click on the image that you want to create a container for. Let's do a create container, create. You can set the name as anything. And then let's click run. Once the container is created, let's click on terminal. And then if we do LSCPU, we're going to see a little bit more detail, details about this um, Docker container. As you can see, this one is on ARM architecture. And then let's type in where is Volgrind. And then as you can see, the first path that pops up is user bit Volgrind. Let's copy this one. And then let's also double check the x64 one. If it's the same one, it's going to be very easy because we're not going to have to modify that Volgrind path. Let's create a container for this one. We created a new one. Let's go to terminal. And then we can double check which to, what this one is running on. This is on x64, x8664 now. And let's check where is Volgrind on this um, container. Um, where is Volgrind? And then as you can see, it's on the same path. So let's go and define this path. It's going to be done in settings, preferences, under build execution deployment, dynamic analysis tools, Volgrind. And you can just paste the Volgrind executable right here. Let's click OK. And then let's see if we can run the um, Volgrind plan. So we are back on Docker test, Docker R. We're going to click on run Docker test with Volgrind. You guys can see we got the output here. And then we also have a yellow arrow. That means that we have some output from Volgrind. Let's click on that. And you guys can see we are getting the leak definitely lost warning. Then if we click on that, it's saying that there's an issue at 11. And then, as you can see, line 11 is where we created a memory leak. And it also gives us some other um, warnings, especially for the uninitialized value. So it's saying us that we are using an uninitialized value, which is at here, because we are trying to print out a uninitialized integer. And it's saying that there's also a jump or move that depends on uninitialized value, which should also be the same line you can see here. Hi everyone, I'm on a uh, Windows machine right now running on x86 64-bit Intel CPU and I'm going to test this Docker containers on this computer as well. So let's try to run this uh, configuration right now on uh, the local tool set and that what we're seeing is the very similar results to the MacBook running on ARM architecture. The true is 1, false is 0. What's different is the uninitialized integer, which is 1 in this case. And it looks like on Windows, we're always getting one for uninitialized value. Okay, so how can we... Uh, add, I'm also not able to use Volgrind because there's no Volgrind executable on my computer. So the Docker installation steps are going to be very similar to Mac OS. And then after we download everything, you should be able to run different... We, we should be able to test different architectures and also run uh, Volgrind here as well. So let's go to... You should first download the Docker desktop client. And after you download this client, you might have to um, download Windows subsystem for Linux during the installation of Docker, Docker desktop client. Once everything is installed, you should run the Docker desktop client as an administrator. I had some issues when I was not running it as an administrator, but they were resolved after running it as an administrator. If everything is running correctly, this Docker um, logo should be green. And then when you hover over it, it should say engine running. 
Okay, so right, right now everything is empty. To pull that image, let's go to Docker Hub. And then I'm going to use the same image, kind of both, right? This was the one for x64. And then I'm going to copy this Docker pull command. I'm going to paste it onto terminal. Okay, now the Docker, uh, the container image is downloaded onto the computer. Let's go to C Lion, and then let's configure the um, tool sets and the Steam profile. So uh, under build execution deployment, we're in tool chains. I'm going to do add Docker, and then uh, this should all uh, get configured automatically. Docker and the image should be the one that we just downloaded. And everything is detected. And let's also go to CMake, and let's also create a CMake profile. And let's name this um, Docker. And then let's make this a debug build type. And then let's make sure the tool chain is the Docker that we just created. Everything else should be the same. Let's apply, click OK. If everything is looking good, the CMake projects should both work. But when I tried to run it, it said that there is an error with CMake. It said that the, um, the CMake file, the CMake version that I configured on cmakelist.txt is higher than the one that's on the Docker container. So this Docker container only has the version 3.16.3. .3. Um, if you need to have a CMake that is higher version than this one, you might be able to, you, you should try to find a um, Docker container image that has a higher version uh, CMake. But I'm just going to lower the version on my cmake.list file because I don't need the 3.20 version. Okay, now that we reloaded this, it should hopefully finish install, uh, finish compiling. Okay, and then the configuration and generation seems to be done, and we got this finished message. Now that this is done, we should see both of them under the run configurations. Let's uh, run it with the local toolchain again. We're seeing the same results, and uh, let me run that again. We're seeing the same results, and then let's also do it on the Docker container. As you guys can see, we are still getting the same results as if you were running this program on an x86 64-bit Linux machine. Okay, and then uh, let's also configure the Volbrand to work. As you remember, we need to define the Volbrand um, executable path. Uh, to get the Volbrand executable path, let's go to services. And uh, let me stop this. So this should be the screen that you, you see. Uh, let's connect. And let's find the image that we want to create a container for. Let's create a container. Yeah, we don't have to specify a name. The Docker container is now created. Let's go to terminal. And then just to check, we can enter this command. And we're seeing that we're running on x86.64. And let's do where it is. All right. And then as you guys can see, we have all of the paths. I'm going to use this path because it was the same as the uh, previous two configurations. And let's copy this. Let's go to settings. And under build execution deployment, dynamic analysis tools, wall grind, you just paste this path. And now we should be able to um, run ball right. Let's go to Docker test again. And then under Docker, the Docker profile, let's try to run ball right. So we got the output, and we also have the yellow arrow, meaning that we have some output for the world, right? And we're getting the same result.